Grace, mercy, and peace are yours in abundance from God our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Our text for our meditation this morning is taken from the prophet Hosea, chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. When Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt I called my son. But the more I called Israel, the further they went from me. They sacrificed to the Baals, and they burnt incense to images. It was I who taught Ephraim to walk, taking them by the arm. But they did not realize it was I who healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with ties of love. I lifted the yoke from their neck and bent down to feed them. Will they not return to Egypt? And will not Assyria rule over them because they refuse to repent? Swords will flash in their cities, will destroy the bars of their gates, and put an end to their plans. My people are determined to turn from me. Even if they call to the Most High, He will by no means exalt them. How can I give up on you, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? How can I treat you like Adma? How can I make you like Zeboim? My heart has changed within me. All my compassion is aroused. I will not carry out my fierce anger, nor will I turn and devastate Ephraim. For I am God and not a man, the Holy One among you. I will not come in my wrath. So far, text. One of my favorite things about Christmas is learning what families do together. Maybe it was going out sometime during the month of December and slaying that perfect Christmas tree and mounting it on the back of your car and driving it home only to put it in the perfect place in your home and trim it with all of your favorite decorations. I think whether it's cookie making or eggnog drinking or maybe singing carols, we had a request for that this year also, I, all of those are wonderful activities but I think you have to understand that your God also wants to see the family of believers together at Christmas. That's what He loves. And you also understand that Christmas is a time when broken families are still struggling. And it's even almost more accentuated because there's pressure to be perfect. Now everyone's happy at Christmas to have a good Christmas. Whatever that means. Well, I want to go forward under the theme this morning God calls His children home by sending His Son. You, you maybe see pictures of a baby's first Christmas. Maybe your family's blessed to have a baby at Christmas. It's kind of a special time just seeing that baby fumble around, maybe accidentally rip paper off of a, a gift. And it's cute. And I don't know that it always has a whole lot of meaning. You probably don't remember it. You had your first Christmas once. But everyone had to have been there. And I want you to look at verse 3 in depth here. It was I who taught Ephraim to walk, taking them by the arms. But they did not realize that it was I who healed them. I was traveling um, in Christmas of past. And I remember sitting next to a young woman on a flight. Um, she was barely in college. And uh, she had just been to Thailand. She was a member of our church body, oddly enough. Anytime you're traveling to Milwaukee, the chances are pretty high that there will be someone from our church body on that flight. And this woman was coming home for Christmas. And I just kind of floored myself. This doesn't happen out of the blue. Someone had talk, taught her how to walk as a Christian. Someone had taught her the little things so that when she reached the age of 17, 18, 19. She thought, maybe I could go to Thailand to share God's Word. That, it's just an awesome thing to see someone do and to see the work of the Spirit in that person's life. It was fun. Well, I, you just hear it one more time. It was I who taught Ephraim to walk, taking them by the arms. Have you ever watched a child learn how to walk? For my eldest, for Nate, we almost put a helmet on the poor boy because he would try to find every corner in the house and slam his head into it. We took him to the doctor and they kind of looked at us slowly and said, he falls, huh? I'm like, yeah, he, we just, yeah, he just keeps on falling over. 
I had my own struggles in this area. The doctors didn't understand why my feet kept on spreading apart every time I took a step until I'd fall flat on my face. And the one doctor um, had prescribed all these fancy braces, and sometimes it can get extremely invasive as they try to teach a child how to walk. And another doctor said, before we do all that, I want you to go home and tie shoes together. And two weeks of having my shoes tied together, where I'd take little steps, but my feet had to stay together and I was cured. <laughs> and I could walk straight. I could, my, my feet wouldn't go out and I wouldn't fall on my face. I was struggling even from a young age. But the second half of verse 3, it was I who taught Ephraim how to walk, taking them by the arms, but I did not realize it was I who healed him. Now, I don't remember any of this. Do you think that my parents just tell me this stuff to keep me humble? It would work. Well, I don't know. But I, I wonder sometimes if God's people, their whole history is recorded for us in the pages of Scripture. Did they forget? Obviously they did when you see what their life was like. It was I who taught Ephraim how to walk, taking them by their arms, but they did not realize that it was I who healed them. Are you hearing the ache in God's voice yet? Verse 4. I led them with cords of human kindness, ties of love. I lifted the yoke from their neck and bent down to feed them. Have you ever had to feed a baby? Oh, oof, that, is, that is so much work and it's such a mess. It would take me a half hour to feed my infant child. And Jenna would come home and say, what is wrong with you? What? It's not that hard to feed a baby. And I'd say, you don't understand. It is that hard. But the child was fed. And so I always walked away knowing that I was a good dad because my child did not go hungry. Well, I think God could have the same attitude. Prophet after prophet was sent to his people and they killed them. Jesus tried so, our God tried so hard over and over again to send his word to the prophets. But his people wanted nothing to do with them. That was disappointing, I'm sure, and heartbreaking. When Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt I called my son. But the more I called Israel, the further they went from me. They sacrificed to the Baals and burned incense to images. I want to share a quote with you from an article that I'll put in the blog post for this sermon. This is from uh, December 17th. It's a New York Times article. Having nowhere to sleep and nothing to eat. That's where meth comes into play, said the girl 17 who asked to be identified by her nickname, Rose. Those things aren't a problem if you're using. Now, I think that all of us have kind of a hierarchy of problems in life, and when you talk to any counselor or psychologist, you, you have to have certain things in life to care about, well, society and functioning in society. For example, if a child goes to school, but they don't know where the next meal is going to come from, and they don't know where they're going to stay at night, it's difficult for that child to learn about math. And in this case, if a child, almost an adult, is on the street and doesn't know where they're going to sleep at night and doesn't know where the next meal comes from, how bad are you if you're willing to go to a drug addiction to make all those things go away? That is a heartbreaking story and it's so common all across our land. One of the members of our church is a teacher and she said that she has four children in her class who don't have mothers because they've died. The moms have died of drug overdoses. That, that's just shocking to hear. And yet if you go into the rural areas of our country, it's not just the city. It's there too, of course. But everywhere is being ravaged. God calls His children home. And I want you to know that the story that God was telling of these lost people that He loved so dearly, this prophecy from Hosea was 750 years before Jesus walked the earth. Before Jesus was called out of Egypt. Matthew mentions this in the Gospel lesson that you heard this morning. 
or when Jesus came back out of Egypt. Well, this was first prophesied when Hosea used it as a reference for the one thing a Jew could hang his hat on. How do I know that my God loves me? Times are terrible. Well, I know that my God loves me because he rescued us. Remember that? That exodus? Where he parted the Red Sea, where he defeated the, the nation of Egypt? That's when he called his child Israel. He did the same thing, of course, when he called Jesus back to Israel. I, I have to take a pause because you, what, there's all, things, all kinds of things that are mentioned here. The, the Baals, they burn incense to images. The Old Testament Jews were tempted to worship a little cow named Baal. It was the fertility god. And that sounds ridiculous to us. And yet remember, an idol doesn't have to be a little cow. You don't have to go back almost 3,000 years in this case to experience idolatry. Idolatry, after coming off one of the most consumer-heavy, commercialized seasons, this is the first Sunday of Christmas. The Christmas season lasts two Sundays. This year you're going to get a boat. It just depends how the calendar falls. I want you to understand that those idols are still real. Anything that's more important than God is an idol. And it's in your heart. So what does it look like? Is it your wallet? Is it your children for whom you did things that probably weren't the wisest just to gain their favor this year? Is it maybe yourself? Is that what dominates? Do you do things just to make yourself happy? Is it just apathy? Have you given up and you don't care anymore? Whatever that idol is, it's dangerous. Verse 5, Will they not return to Egypt? And will not Assyria rule over them because they refuse to repent? Swords will flash in their cities will destroy the bars of their gates and put an end to their plans. My people are determined to turn from me. Even if they call to the Most High, He will by no means exalt them. God had no choice. There were consequences to sin. In fact, sometimes we're so accomplished in our sin, we don't even realize the sins that we're caught in, and yet one thing that we can't escape is the guilt. That there's something wrong. Our consciences, that law of God that's burned into our hearts, sometimes that can be damaged. The Bible talks about how it can be seared like a, like a, like a hot iron has, has cauterized it and you can't even feel it anymore. Where you sin so many times over and over again, your conscience, you could pass a lie detector test. Sure, I can go murder. That's an extreme example, of course, but that's, that's the idea. That it can be damaged. Well, most people, no matter who it is, have a conscience and they are being told something is not right between them and God. And so God is calling out all the stops. He will do everything in His power, even send an enemy nation to destroy them, to shake them from their slumber. God is not promising to do that to you. And yet... If something does bad, if something bad comes into your life, it doesn't mean God hates you. But every time something bad comes, take a minute and say, is there something that I need to repent of? Maybe it's an opportunity to just take a step back and think about it. That's a healthy spiritual exercise on a daily basis, Christian. And it's worth your time. Verse 8 and 9. This might be a little confusing. How can I give up on you, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? How can I treat you like Adma? How can I make you like Zeboyim? My heart is changed within me, and all my compassion is aroused. I will not carry out my fierce anger, nor will I turn and devastate Ephraim. For I am God and not a man, the Holy One among you. I will not come in wrath. Now you're thinking, God, are you mad? Or not? Are you going to come and destroy or not? Are we doing flashing swords, knocking down the bars of the city or not? Just a couple words here. Ephraim is talking about the northern kingdom. 
And Adma and Zeboim, these were the twin cities of Sodom and Gomorrah that were wiped out. The problem was they don't understand how God can be perfectly just and perfectly loving at the same time. He can't ignore sin, otherwise he wouldn't be a holy God. You see, the answer is only found in the cross and in the Christ child. God calls his children home by sending his son. No matter what God does for us, that won't stop us from sinning. We're hopeless sinners. And yet, what's so amazing isn't so much His holiness and His justice. What's crazy is His compassion for you and how much He loves you. Israel was never good enough for God. You're never going to be good enough for God either. That's why Christmas happened. Jesus came to be born into a world full of God's laws. He kept every one of them for you. To live in your place and then, yes, to die in your place. To take the punishment for your sin that you might be forgiven and guilt-free. That is the message of peace at Christmas. There, there was a, a grandfather who commented on a child who was not doing well and kind of lost their way. This is what he said. Of course she's going to have to pay the price for whatever she's doing. She's responsible for her actions. But that does not mean we love her any less. I think that makes sense. That sounds like any grandparent, any parent who would chew off their arm for their child. That's who we are. That's what we do. That's who your God is. Who just wants His family home for Christmas. Now there's, there's consequences for your actions. Of course, if you eat too much fruit, cake, you get a belly. Before your God, you will never face the consequences for your sin because of Christmas. Because Jesus came and died for your sin. All that's left for you is an eternity of peace by the side of your Heavenly Father in Heaven. You will enjoy the company of all the saints and all those who have gone before you. I don't know exactly what they do to celebrate Christmas in Heaven. What? I'm excited to find out. I'm excited to see everyone who's there. Because God calls His children home. You and me. He did that by sending His Son. Amen.